Check one, two. I think I sound pretty good. You do. Sound as good as you look. Nasally? Crappy. Yeah. Here so we I, go. That's how I feel. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, in three, two, one. This is Felt Recoil. Welcome to the Felt Recoil Podcast. This is episode number 56. Can you believe that? We're a month past a year. It's so amazing. My wife actually asked me earlier today, hey, are you guys recording the podcast tonight? And I said, 55 weeks in a row we have. Well, why would we not? My name is Chris. Across from me is Patrick. So good to have you back. Uh, I feel I feel great to be back. Uh, I know. Uh, you took a pseudo vacation. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but first, uh, there's a lot to get to, and we'll get to it all. I think we'll get all this in. If not, it is all posted at facebook.com slash felt recall show. Here's what's on the agenda. We'll give you our charity of choice in just a second. Then we're going to talk about the New York City subway bomber, which is really, really funny. Uh, I know. What? That's funny. It was hilarious. And I have a funny story about how I heard the news and my reaction and the reaction it got, which I thought was just equally hilarious. Um, And then the Alabama Senate race, the Kate Steinle verdict and the karma that ensued if you believe in karma even if you just believe that things in this life will come back to you uh, this one's worth hearing then you have a transgender woman so it's a dude a dude weightlifter went to the world championship and only took silver which means he lost to a girl so that's funny Uh, and then our vote of the week is going to be Sarah Silverman because she's scared shaken and freaking out over the fact that an ex-boyfriend flew the American flag out front of his own home how dare he all of that and more after we talk about this week's charity of choice it is wreathsacrossamerica.org. This is one man's annual tribute to the veterans, and it's inspired a legion of volunteers who give rise to the Wreaths Across America of today. Uh, this is a group who goes to Arlington National Cemetery and lays a wreath at every headstone that is in Arlington. And so it's a very noble cause. The fact of the matter is, though, they are short on funds this year, and they could use your generous donation so wreaths across america.org you can find it at facebook.com slash felt recall show just visit our facebook page if you're not familiar and we'll have it there uh simple post it just says our charity of choice for this week and we'd love to see you give a little bit of something to those people because they just do incredible work so give a little and it means a lot okay wreaths across america dot org let's let um let's help arlington <clears throat> get in the christmas spirit it's such a you ever been to arlington hulon i have yeah man that is such a somber and sobering experience uh i can't imagine there's no more humble place in the world i mean maybe you could go to jesus's grave a little bit more difficult to get yourself to israel but um it's a very very humbling experience so uh, check it out for us okay Love you, mean it. Thank you very much. Okay, so <clears throat> yours truly, this is great. By the way, wait, let's start here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so, uh, there's so much to get to, uh, and I'm excited to have you back. You went on kind of a pseudo vacation. You could call it that. Before we get to it, shout out to the Fortis Project on Instagram. They said, hey, they want to get on the program. They want to hang out, get to know each other. They're local here to the upstate of South Carolina. So appreciate the love on Instagram, Fortis Project, the Fortis Project. And uh, we're going to try and get in touch with them and get them on. It looks like they do some custom gun work. Looks kind of cool stuff. So we'll, we'll try and talk to them soon. Okay. I'm you, in. you went on a pseudo, pseudo vacation out to a cabin in the woods. And we don't have to dive too deep if you don't want to, but it was kind of like a, just a quick getaway knowing what you do for a living. I would suppose you don't really take vacation like the rest of us. I'm the guy I can, I go on vacation maybe it's not a healthy habit, but I just turn everything off. I ignore emails. I don't answer phone calls. Oh, that guy's calling. Sorry. You know, throw the phone in the ocean and don't worry about it. And then say later, I didn't get your call because I dropped my phone in the ocean. Like, oh man, that's terrible. But really I was ignoring their call when I threw threw it it. in. Yeah. You know, dropped and thrown. Both of those things are true. Not not exactly the same. No. Well, okay. Sort of. Anyway, 
did you enjoy yourself? It was cold. It was really cold. It was really cold. You went to a log cabin. It was a log cabin that was next to North 20s. Carolina in December. In the middle of nowhere. I can't imagine. 15 degrees out. I think it was about 15 degrees last night. And um, the log cabin was not very well insulated, we'll say. I find that my brain just gives up when my body is cold. I don't know how the pioneers did it. I read a biography about the life of Lincoln one time, and it talked about his boyhood home in the woods of Kentucky and how they basically had a lean-to. They would build three walls, essentially, but the one wall would be slanted, They'd, mm-hmm. and then the third, what we would call like the fourth wall of our home was actually the kitchen, but it was the back end of the kitchen, so your fires would be facing away from where everybody slept in a way. Maybe it was a double-sided fireplace. I never really thought about it that way. It would make sense that they'd just build it open, but then you would cook on the outside of the living quarters, and I don't know how those people did it. I don't know how they did it. And you can see why the infant mortality rate was so much higher then than it is now. Ne- Got to be next to impossible to survive. You were in a somewhat, I mean, you're talking about a home that's 100 years old. Right. And we're talking people that survived 200 years ago. So you kind of had a 100-year leg up on these guys. Still miserable? Totally miserable? Not so miserable? It was not very modern. Gotcha. So, I mean, it was, I would call it, Original. <laughs> the last time I vacationed in a log cabin, we were in Tennessee on the Pigeon River. It was awesome, a lot of fun. But my wife and I were sitting. We, uh, I think our, our oldest son is five now. I think he was maybe two at the time. You know, we still felt like new parents. We we're sitting on. Uh, they had uh, an ottoman as a couch, and we were sitting there watching some TV. And he was sleeping in the downstairs. They had like a rec room that was downstairs. He was sleeping in that room. And we're staring at a big stone fireplace with a TV up on the mantel. And this massive spider of what type I do not know just comes crawling out from between the floor and the fireplace and just hangs there for a second. Just big old wolf looking spider on the stone. And we, we, you know, you both kind of freeze. Like your version of freaking out is not like the movies. You just get really quiet because you go, okay, I gotta play it cool, play it cool. So I stand up, and as I stand up, the spider goes back down. Well, then we literally stuffed every blanket we could find in the crevices between the floor and the fireplace, moved our son up to our room, shut the door, shut blankets <laughs> under the door. Totally creeped out. Totally creeped out. So I don't have the best of experiences either vacationing in log cabins. Yeah, I don't – I mean, it's. It, I think like I was telling you – before we started the show it puts me in a a different perspective for how people lived right and how much harder it is um was so, well <laughs> no yeah still, those, is, still is if you stay there those people don't know the pains of no wi-fi it was easier on them they didn't know what facebook was it was it was so cold it was hard to function <laughs> yeah wi-fi was not much of a concern <laughs> Why did you uh, and your fiance not go to Disney? Uh, I'll let you ask her that next time you see her. I've been trying to get her to go there for years. Have you really? Like they have beer at Epcot. It's, you know. Are you serious right now? You would take her to Disney if she'd go? Yeah, I would. For for a vacation? The Absolutely. Two of you? Yeah. Huh. Uh, why is it? What? This is perfect. You can answer my question. Why do people vacate? I have three sets of friends separately but all currently at Disney. My sister and her husband are celebrating their anniversary. My buddy Dave is there with his wife. And then my okay. co-worker and her husband are at Disney right now. Let me answer your question with a question. Have you ever been to Disney? I was very young. So, so like twice when I was young. So do you remember it? Sure, a little bit. Okay. So that's, that's sort of... There's, there's two ways to think about this. There's one, if you went and you're young and you have those memories... You probably put it into a certain perspective, but as an right. adult, it's a different thing. So my sister posted a video yesterday of her and her husband watching a, a Beauty and the Beast musical, and I thought, what better way to induce suicide out of me <laughs> than to know that I'm burning my PTO? Kid-free, by the way. They have three kids. They left their kids at home. I don't know. It's, which, by the way, I don't know how you explain that. Hey, kids. Yeah. You know Disney? Yeah. We're going. 
But when we say we, <laughs> we mean mom and dad. <laughs> you're going. You're going to go to Taylor's and stay with the Grands. Uh, but no, they do. They take their kids. They take them. They, they do a family vacation every year, and then they go back every year alone. So I don't mean to like disparage them. Uh, it's just it is funny though to think about having to tell your kids we're going back to Disney, but not all we. This we on this side of the table, and that we stays here. Anyway, uh, they're there, and they're watching Beauty and the Beast. And I think if I had a week away from my kids, a Beauty and the Beast musical is not on my list of things to do. So you, I think I'm making your point. When I think Disney, that's what I think is if you want to go watch Beauty and the Beast musicals and hang out with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, you go to Disney and ride the Dumbo ride. There are other things there that I think you would appreciate. Yeah. Okay. Tell me. Um, well, okay, so as we sit here beneath the bust of George General, Washington. General George Washington. Yes, sir. The greatest man that's ever lived. You can go see him at the Hall of Presidents. No. You're giving me a blank stare. I've been to his actual house. See, that's a fun vacation. You can actually, same, actually, I think it's an hour less drive, and you can go to where that man actually lived. Or you can fly to New York City. And go to the tavern, which still stands today, where he gave a victory speech following the American Revolution to all of his generals. You can stand in the spot where he stood while he spoke, and I have. I've seen the bed where he died. Shed a little tear. It was pretty sad. Please continue, though. So, what, what is the Hall of Presidents? Oh, so you're saying you're not going to Disney. <laughs> not, not for George Washington's sake. <laughs> Mickey Mouse BS all day, and then George I mean, Washington maybe I was at night. Reaching a little bit with the George Washington <laughs> thing, okay? I have heard uh, my dad went this year, um, and he said apparently Epcot has like this uh, taste of the world thing, where you walk and like every hundred yards is a different country or something, and there's so the like original culture, idea, music, and food, and all that or something. The original idea I think of Epcot was. Golf, obviously, just from looking at it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it was a golf emporium hotel. R- no? I don't. Wh- what I is mean, the golf ball? I don't know why you don't run the Disney Corporation. <laughs> yeah, it would be so much better. <laughs> it was originally supposed to be a way of living for the future, meaning sort of a, think like a neighborhood system or a city system, but everything was pre-designed so i think that was the original idea i don't like think it was a truman show but real life um or yeah maybe do you remember when glenn beck said glenn i know you listen um glenn beck once said that he was going to establish a real life galt's gulch yes. do you remember this yes is that what we're talking about something where you yeah. could go and learn a trade and different culture type thing yeah and it was supposed to be a, a sort of this um hub of innovation okay where you always uh, the the latest and greatest technologies were always featured um and i think the idea was that it never really took off because of the expense um because you have technology always changing so rapidly okay. yeah so every time a new microwave comes out essentially they were swapping them out for the newest model i see and so it just there's no way they could keep up with the cost okay if that makes sense yeah so i don't think that the theme park and i could be wrong on this but i don't think the theme park was the or uh, you know amusement park whatever you want to call it was the original idea behind it so it sort of evolved into this around the world. So it's shaped in this big circle. And like you're saying, as you go around, um, you've sort of become immersed in these different countries and they have uh, souvenir shops that sell things from those countries. Hmm. Uh, they have food and beer and wine from those areas. So as you, you move through the, the different areas, you, you get into these <laughs> Strange. You go to the Palestine booth and they give you like a suicide <laughs> vest to put on. <laughs> you, you walk next door and there's Israel. You blow it up and it's like confetti though, and everybody ah, Mazel Tov. I don't. I don't think I remember that. Oh, it's not like I don't that. I think I remember Palestine. Is Israel there? 
No, I don't think so. Oh, of course not. See, that's why I don't go to Disney. I've always said they're so anti-Semitic. That's where I was going with this. Um, okay. So well, you're saying that we could worthy... talk about that for 10 minutes yeah. to get to that point. <laughs> uh, it is a worthy vacation spot, though, for adults. Because that's I guess that's what I'm driving at is I don't understand well, so... adults that vacation at Disney. But I've never been as an adult, so maybe there is something to it. But so my original point was, yes, I would take Lindsay there because she's never been so i think there's plenty of fun things to do there plenty to see um like i I went as a kid Mm -hmm. once or twice really pretty young and then about 10 years ago i went again um and my brother and i went to epcot and got super drunk (laughs) because you just walk around drinking beer isn't it super expensive though i'd imagine i mean are you talking like you know no, twelve dollar beers. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's still a good time. So I, don't <laughs> know, I mean, people go to people go to Yankees games and pay like twenty seven dollars for a beer. I mean, uh, I, like that, to yeah. me, that's not fun. But no. people do it all day. So uh, I hate baseball games. They're so boring. Professional baseball games. I like the minor league. I can get behind. Um, okay. Well, it's just it was it's very intriguing to me that I have three sets of friends there. Again, all of them independently. None of these people know each other. By the way, they wouldn't know each other to see each other, but they're all there at the same time. And I'm seeing all these posts on Facebook, and I think to myself, just personally, as an adult, if I have time and money to vacation. That is probably not going to break the top ten of places I'm going to go. You know what? You know what I want to do? Um, I found a ranch out in Wyoming that you can pay probably close to exactly what you pay Disney, and you go out and on day one you get a 101 on how to properly ride a horse, and then you ride the horse out to the glamping area. That's what I'm calling it because these are uh, pre-pitched tents. With nice cots. How much does Brokeback Ranch cost? <laughs> right. Uh, so, hold on. Hold Sorry. on. I want you to hear why you should go with me. Um, Wait a minute. <laughs> you get a, a catered breakfast every morning, and then you can either go fly fishing or horseback riding, or they have mountain biking trails. You can hit all this stuff up throughout the day, and then you come back, have a picnic lunch type thing, and then go do other activities, and then you come back and you have a catered dinner. And you can do this for three or five days at a time, but it's like two grand a person for the cheapest option. But still... That is awesome. That's what I would do. Tell you what, Chris. That's what I would do. Not cut you a deal. Epcot. But that's that's just me. I'm gonna cut you a deal. Yes. Nineteen hundred bucks. Okay. Meet me at my house Saturday morning. <laughs> I'm gonna make you some scrambled eggs. <laughs> uh, we're gonna head up Paris Mountain, do a little mountain biking. Okay. And then I I I'll have a picnic basket in the back of the truck. We'll stop. We'll eat. And then uh, I'll take you down to the pond. You can fish. <laughs> right there in the park. Okay. Don't worry, I got the admission covered. Okay. And then uh, when we're done, I'll drop you back by your house because it's on the way to mine. All right. I was waiting that entire time for the gay part. And 1900 came. bucks. No, no, no. This is a business opportunity. <laughs> I don't have time for all that. Uh, all right. Interesting. <laughs> it's just interesting. That's all. Not really my style, but uh, to each his own. Um, okay. You would go. I'm very intrigued by that. You know, given the opportunity, just yes. I'm going to say this and we can let it go. Given the opportunity, I would go to Epcot right now. Yeah. But I wouldn't go to Disney. Okay. Okay. There's a, a big difference. Is Epcot, Epcot in is, Disney or is no, it separate? It's you like, pay separate it's like to get down in the separate? street. Okay. Yeah. Owned okay. by Disney, but yeah. it's completely separate facilities. It, Epcot's not really for kids as much as Disney is. Okay. I think okay. there's still plenty of cool stuff for adults at disney don't get me wrong give me one one thing uh, don't say hogwarts academy if I, wouldn't, that's a thing. I wouldn't know I about know. that i did well i'll tell you what's not let me start there first i did go on the small world ride with my brother and it was the weirdest creepiest thing i've ever seen oh really yeah hmm. so don't do that okay don't do that what do i do in disney as a grown man um, man, there's a lot of things you can do. You know what I really like? I just asked for one. Okay, I'll give you one. Okay. That I really enjoyed, because it's a lot of fun, mm-hmm. is the haunted house. They have a haunted house there. Yeah, the mansion. 
What's it, will, it called? Yeah, it's, yeah, Haunted Mansion. It will blow your mind. That's the one where the elevator drops, right? They simulate the no, elevator drop. No, no, you're thinking of uh, like the Tower of Terror or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's at Universal Studios. Oh, okay, you're conflating all these parks, man. Sorry, you about don't know that. anything about anything. <laughs> no, I don't. He, he, I'm kidding. You know, when I was young and in elementary school, we would do candy bar sales for charity, right? You get the remember that brown box that would break in half sure. and had a handle you'd carry it around, and sell people candy bars for a buck a piece. If you sold a hundred candy bars, the school would take you to Disney World. But your parents had to buy your ticket in. If you sold 150, the school took you and paid your admission into the park. So that was the big goal. I did that. I did that like once or twice. But back up real quick. When I was young, because we lived in Jacksonville, Florida, so it was a couple hour drive. But there was a theme park called Boardwalk and Baseball. It's all baseball themed. So we would go there instead of going to Disney. Or you could go to SeaWorld. But I digress. The point is... Is that where you like spill beer on yourself and then like people like clear the benches and punch each other in the face? That was basically it. Yeah. It was a really, really was strong awesome experience for a seven-year-old. Yeah. Uh, but that was about the age I was when we were going to Disney. I wasn't old enough to really remember all the details of Disney. Um, and obviously it was a pretty sweet treat to get to go to disney i don't think you can appreciate but. disney until you're older though that's sort of my point but it isn't it but i feel like the other side of it is it's geared towards kids like what is the point of an adult being in disney what's the point of them all going, these cartoon characters going to the the effort that they do for kids i have no idea do you think the kids pick up on all that stuff because i didn't when i was little no no i i'm telling you i just don't understand the entire concept you know, you see what I'm saying? Like clearly, yeah. <laughs> because as an adult, I'm not amused by cartoon characters. I'm not amused by the fantasy worlds that much. Uh, and then as a kid, yeah, it's all over your your all over your head. Uh, also, as an adult, <laughs> when I and, and maybe it's just because I'm super cynical, but if I look at a twelve dollar beer or you know a fifteen dollar slice of pizza. I go, dude, I can do this at home and I can be comfortable and not pay for the accommodations. So I, all I'm saying is uh, I'm interested. I'm, it was intriguing to me to hear that you would go because I thought we'd be on the same page there. But I'm, I'm super interested in what you would do if you did go. So I kind of stole it from you there. But what's the one thing? What's the one thing I do when I go to Disney as a grown man, 36 years old? I've left the three kids at home and taken my wife, right? What's the one thing I do? Well, that was sort of my my answer was the Haunted Mansion. Okay, okay. Just because that's a fun ride. You don't have to have... It has nothing to do with any cartoons or any movies. Gotcha. Um, Is it a roller coaster? Um, it's... No, it's... You're like in a little cart on a track, and it sort of spins around back and forth and points you in certain directions. Oh, man. Um, but there's a lot going on at... You should just look it up on YouTube. You know, the entire time I would say, man, this is worth the nine-hour drive and the $200 admission ticket. Oh, man, it spun me to the left. Oh, and to the right. I'm so glad. Let me be real real fair here, real clear. <laughs> yes. Lindsay has not been <laughs> because we haven't had another reason to be in that part of the world. <laughs> So, Lindsay probably won't go unless we have another reason to be near Orlando. So, I'm kind of with you on the whole, I'm not driving nine hours just to go see Mickey Mouse. Okay. That's, you're, not, you're not alone on that one. It's just such a funny thing. Such a funny thought. All right. Anyway, it, I mean, to, and to each their own. Like, there's many, many, many other things I could pick on here. Um, that would still apply things people do even locally that I, I just I'm curious about and uh, you know I have no hard feelings it's just a it's an interesting thing to me to see and especially my buddy Dave who is a strong 10 years older than me um, it's interesting to see he goes as a habit like two to three times a year he goes so but he's big Star Wars Harry Potter he loves it all so interesting yeah I don't like any of that stuff that much <laughs> Not gonna lie, just interesting. All right, <clears throat> let's see here. I would I would go to Epcot though. Epcot sounds pretty amazing, so I won't hate on anybody for that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so I was in the car dealership this week. Um, do you know what a brake booster is? 
No. Oh, Tell yeah. me, Chris. Yeah. Uh, it's something on a Volkswagen Jetta. <laughs> And mine went bad. I got in my car Monday morning, and uh, I pressed the brake, and I turned the engine on. When I released the brake pedal, it went, (laughs) and I pressed the brake again, and it went away. And I was like, well, that's probably not good. So I called the dealership from my car, and I'm like, hey, uh, so it's making the sound. The guy goes, oh, sounds like your brake booster went bad. I said, oh, well, can I drive it? He said, oh, yeah, you'll be fine. And it was. It was fine. I drove it up to the dealership. A s- simple procedure, $900 to fix. <laughs> God bless. Uh, better than a car payment. But here's the whole point. So I'm sitting in their little uh, waiting room area, which, by the way, you take your car wherever you want to get it fixed. But I got to just give props to our local Volkswagen dealership. Not a paid endorsement, by the way. But if they want to give me my, my $900 you, you did, back. You did, you did pay them 900 bucks. So I feel like. I paid them to endorse it's, them. Yeah, it is a paid endorsement. It's backwards. It's just, it's just you just don't understand how they work. Uh, yeah, apparently. But I walked in and that guy was like, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little while. You want us to get you a car and you know take a car with and just go wherever you need to go? I said, yeah, that'd be great. He said, well, it's going to take me a minute on some paperwork, but uh, fresh coffee, some pastries, and uh, cold drinks, if you'd like, help yourself. I turn around, there's literally a Starbucks coffee bar right behind me, and by that I mean you make your own, but it's all Starbucks products. It was legit coffee, uh, cold pastries, cold drinks. So this is your version of heaven. No, this, is, this is Volkswagens <laughs> and Starbucks. Cancel the car! <laughs> so I just sat in the corner all day. Uh, yes, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, very nice. So anyway... Uh, the point is, as I'm waiting, there's two other people in the waiting area, and they do breaking news. Like a breaking news, terrorist attack in New York City. And as soon as they say it, all the salespeople who are you know within anybody within earshot, anybody gets up and walks towards the area. And then they say, basically, a Bangladesh immigrant is accused of setting off a pipe bomb in the New York City subway system. The suspect only injured himself and i like bust out laughing <laughs> i just go yes and i laugh and everybody looks at me nobody else laughs everybody looks at me and i go that's exactly how it should be every single time that is awesome that is awesome and then <laughs> All right, and and Muhammad from the used car department <laughs> just gave you a gleaming stare from across the room. First of all, don't assume that the only guy there that would support terrorism is named Muhammad, even though you're probably right. Um, but what was great? <clears throat> I just picked the most uh, the most popular name in the world, Chris. Right. Oh, you're I figured right. odds were good. Good that point. Way. Good point. It was a Volkswagen dealership. Yeah. So the fact that Hitler Yorick came out to tell me the problems with my car. <laughs> Um, so I'm I'm really tickled by the fact that only the suicide bomber hurt himself, and everybody's just kind of looking at me. And I go, that's, you know, that's kind of how it should be, and then nobody really wanted to pile on with me about the guy. And then uh, you start handing out felt recoil show business cards, <laughs> right? Right. People are just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Oh man, I do have a story. I wonder if I could. I, I should tell. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, the felt recoil path crossed real life path this week in a very strange way i'm gonna give it some consideration i might tell that next week all right <clears throat> anyway the point is uh the bangladeshi immigrants according to foxnews.com um had his first court appearance today we're recording on wednesday via video from the hospital room where he's recovering from burns <laughs> Sustained in the blast. Uh, Akayed Ula said little during the hearing, which lasted a little over 10 minutes. He could be seen on the video lying on a hospital bed with his head propped up on a pillow and his body covered up to his neck in his sheets. Two assistant public defenders stood beside his hospital uh, bed and did not request bail. U.S. Magistrate Judge Catherine Parker, sitting in a federal courthouse in Manhattan, communicated with the terrorist via video shown on several monitors in the courtroom. She read him his rights as he nodded his head several times, acknowledging that he understood he did not enter a plea, but answered a few of the judge's questions, including answering, I can see you, when she asked if he could hear. Um, 
My goodness. Oh, by the way, um, strong point to be made here. Everybody is screaming about the fact that this guy was part of the chain immigration system, right? Uh, He only got into the United States because his relatives moved here and helped him get in. So he it's the second terror attack in New York City in five weeks. The Port Authority uh, says he was one of 141,501 immigrants who have entered the U.S. from Bangladesh through chain migration since 2005. So in 12 years, you've had 141,000 people enter and you have one guy act like this and people want to end the practice. Isn't that the same thing the left does to the gun community every time? believe so. I mean, let's not act like one out of 141,000 is any reason to stop a program that may have allowed good, innocent, needy people to come into this country and prosper. Okay. There are a lot of immigrants that contribute a lot of good. And for the record, this guy came here legally. Okay. So let's not stop a program that allows people to come here legally while ignoring the gushing wound at our southern border. Making sense? Mm. I just feel like that's the exact same thing the left does to the gun community every time there's a mass shooting. Well, see, we got to make all guns illegal. And then we say, what? There's, there's 100 million gun owners in this country. If we were a problem, you would know it. That's the meme that goes around. Sure. You're talking one out of 141,000. Isn't that one one thousandth of 1%? So let's calm down and let's not act like we have to stop the chain immigration system because this one guy acted crazy. Now, I want to tie this into the fact that I do believe karma will sort things like this out for us. Kate Steinle being a great example. As you probably well know, this Kate Steinle case reached the jury and the jury acquitted on guilty on, on murder charges, which, by the way, was an overcharge. This is a common practice in the legal community. If you don't know what you do is you charge high. So murder requires um, uh, premeditation. You have to think about it. You have to decide you're going to do it. And then you have to go carry the act of murder out. Right. This guy obviously did not premeditate the death of Kate Steinle. Uh, maybe he thought, I'm going to go kill somebody today, but they never proved that. But still, they charged him with murder. OK, so that's an overcharge because what they hope is that he will plead to a lesser charge and it doesn't see trial. Very common sure. practice. Right. Well, the jury acquitted him and said, no, not guilty uh, on murder. And he walks. OK, uh, the jury is giving some crazy interviews now. Have you seen any of these? No. So they're starting to talk. Um, They're asking to not be identified. Uh, Why? mm, Because they're saying the shooting was a freak accident. One of the jurors who spoke with Fox News... Wait, 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 wait. Yes, please. Yeah. So it was a freak accident that an illegal immigrant had a stolen firearm that belonged to a federal agent in his possession right and was brandishing it on a public pier yes in san francisco shot the ground in the direction of people and the round skipped off the ground and hit kate in the back yes is all of that what we're calling a freak accident right or just the last part uh basically the last third of that maybe okay. half okay um, i just want to be clear the juror says the jury was not allowed to consider the defendant's prior record of politics including sanctuary cities or the fact that he'd been deported several times ah snap hold on my internet's down sorry uh if i was not a juror on this trial the juror said i would probably think the same way why did you let him go free but again the reason is they could not prove to us that he intentionally killed her and through all the evidence i think that it was a freak accident the juror said his main concern was the manslaughter charge aha and that if Zarat was threatening people with the gun or waving the weapon before shooting Steinle. During the trial, they could not prove that. He said all the videos we saw, never, not even one video showed that he was pointing the gun at her. So I think it was very weak. 
The juror said he understood the national backlash the decision caused. However, he was confident the jury reached the right conclusion. Now, <clears throat> what we They're have not, to... Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> again. Yes. Again. I just have to dissect this because <clears throat> yes, they're not sure that he was pointing it in her direction, but he but shot he killed her. her, right? Yes. So I'm not sure these people it. understand how guns work. That's exactly right. And the fact that you would call it a freak accident, you can't, unless it's a SIG 320 pre-recall, most likely you're not picking a gun up and it, it just goes off. That is so unlikely to happen. You are pulling the trigger, whether you mean to or not. I'll tell you this, too. There were reports that this gun, which supposedly I think was a SIG um, Hammerfire model, uh, that it apparently, quote unquote, had a hair trigger Mm. because it was set up for a federal agent who was highly trained. So he would have what you're saying is he may have cocked the hammer. And then tap gonna, that trigger. I'm going to assume that. But the fact that the media was reporting that this gun was somehow modified to have a lighter trigger pull than a standard model because it was uh, in use by a federal agent sort of laughable. Right. Um, well, that's true. New York City. New York City. Those guys have like a 25-pound trigger pull all because of lawyers, because the yeah. lawyers got involved and said, well, uh, you know, we need to, we need to sort of... Make sure it doesn't go off on accident. Yeah, yeah. We got to have the, our liabilities in check here and make sure that we're we're doing our due diligence so that the wrong people don't get shot. And then what happens? <laughs> and then they shoot a bunch of innocent people uh, outside of the uh, Empire, State Empire State Building. Thank you. I kept thinking Eiffel Tower as I was saying that. I couldn't get Eiffel Tower <laughs> we out of <laughs> uh, Might as well be. They shot like 16 people outside the Empire State Building and never hit the bad guy. I'm pretty they sure they killed eight innocent people people right or did they no they just injured they killed them hold on hold on all right go ahead i think they shot a whole bunch of people and not a single round hit the guy they were trying to actually stop so that's what these ridiculously heavy trigger pulls would get you that's my whole point yeah and we should import a very important side note by the way we know this firsthand because we took a class with a New York Police Department officer who had traveled to the same location we were at, and he brought his service weapon with him, and the trigger pool was astonishing. It was, and I mean that in a negative way. It was so terrible, it was hard to comprehend his trigger pool was that bad. I can't remember what he said it was supposed to be, um, because I think... Uh, I thought he said like seven, like 12? I want to say 12 sounds about right, but I think... 10 might be a standard Glock trigger pull for a New York model. Now, that makes sense on New York. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Five and a half if you're anybody else in the real world. Yeah, in a free, five and in half. A free state, mm-hmm. five and a half. But I, I think it was supposed to be 10 or 12, and it was l- legitimately 18 to 20. We took that class in March of 2015. Here's an article on CNN.com from August of 2012. On a busy Friday morning in Manhattan, nine pedestrians suffered bullet or fragment wounds after police unleashed a hail of gunfire at a man wielding a 45 caliber pistol who had just killed a former co-worker. The officers unloaded 16 rounds in the shadow of the Empire State Building at a disgruntled formal apparel designer, killing him after he engaged in a gun battle with police. So they fired 16 rounds and were able to hit nine innocent people while killing the gunman and it's all because not because they're bad with guns not because of a lack of training it's all because their guns are designed to be harder to be accurate with did that make sense i think that made sense um very it makes no sense very bad design very bad idea on their part so <clears throat> that's the kate steinley case and the point is that karma comes around to get you this wouldn't have happened This would not have happened if the city of San Francisco had returned the illegal immigrant to the federal government as the federal government asked. The federal government asked San Francisco, hold on to him. Do not let him go. He's been deported multiple times. He's convicted of these crimes. We want him, and we're going to send him home. And San Francisco said absolutely not. 
absolutely not. We don't do that. And so this man was able to go out, get a gun, and kill Kate Steinle. Whether he murdered her intentionally or not, her blood is still on the hands of the city of San Francisco and anyone who supports the sanctuary city policies, including its mayor, who, by the way, is now dead. San Francisco Mayor Edwin Lee, according to CNN.com, a former a former civil rights attorney who became the first Asian American to serve in the city's top post, died early Tuesday. Huh. That's weird. Wait a second. When was the Steinle verdict? This was uh, this was like a week ago. Last last Tuesday. Hmm. Wait, seven days later, he's dead. Karma. Hard to imagine. Lee had been mayor since 2011. He suffered a heart attack while shopping at a Safeway grocery store. Oh, man. Uh, Lee's office didn't release his cause of death. Well, oh, well. What if he was shot in the back? But Oh, I see. I'm just saying they didn't, they're didn't. they not releasing it. They didn't say. I mean. Could be anything. What if I accidentally found a federal agent's gun? And happened to point it in his and direction. And it had a hair trigger. And, and it, it killed just went him. off. I mean, my bad, but not my fault, right. but my no. bad. Well, the precedent's been set. I didn't mean to say my bad. You can you can go free. All right. <laughs> as long as I'm here illegally, I'll be fine. So stupid. Patrick, what do you make of the Alabama Senate race with Roy Moore? Um, we know, I don't know everything there is to know about Roy Moore. I know there's enough on him that even Donald Trump wouldn't support the guy. So there's got to be some dirt on him, okay? Um, Because if there's a blind loyalist that is more blind and loyal than Donald Trump, I don't know who it is. Not to hate on the guy, but that's a guy that, if you know, he's going to go party line every time. So... If Donald Trump won't he also back says you, the first thing that comes out, you know, into his head, <laughs> it immediately comes out of his mouth. So it's not, you know, it's not hard to like be yeah. wishy washy about what Donald Trump thinks. President I mean, Trump, how do you feel about Roy Moore? Ah, that pedophile. That's not a pedophile. I'll tell you when. Believe I- me, <laughs> he's not a pedophile. That's what I was trying to say. Oh uh, man, uh, he lost You're to a guy. He lost to a guy named Jones uh, in a pretty well, I, you know. I don't think Alabama is a red state, and people say it's a red state. Historically, it's a red state, but I don't know, man. Um, Large group of minorities in Alabama, uh, high Muslim population, high African-American population. There's Charles Barkley down there. Charles, by the way. Whipping the campaign trail into a frenzy. Wait a second. I'm so glad you said that. Hold on. I need to tell you something. That might get us an expletive rating this this week. I can't wait. Um, <clears throat> I, fifty six weeks. What's that? We're on we're on number fifty six. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we almost made little, it. Get that little e next to us on week fifty six. You never know. Charles Barkley has been on his high horse about Roy Moore making the state of Alabama look stupid. Right, we're gonna look like buffoons if we elect Roy Moore. We're gonna look like idiots. Listen, that guy doesn't need any any help in looking stupid. Because when he when he got out of the NBA, they're like, "Hey, Charles Barkley's cool. People like him. We'll right. make him a commentator." Mm. And then that lasted all of about I don't know two games because. This is my impression of Charles Barkley commentating sure. on basketball. Okay, so he's a color commentator. He's, Whoa! He's, what did you say? Yep, that. <laughs> He's on the sideline, right? Uh huh. At that little table they have at basketball. I mean, I don't at, know why. at worst, calling black. <laughs> Sorry. Unbelievable. I, I apologize. They have. We this- are in my home. <laughs> my children might hear what you say. <laughs> all right, carry on. Well. <laughs> all right. All right. That's the worst thing to hear. <laughs> yeah. This is my impression of Charles Barkley. Okay. So the basketball gets passed to just some random guy, okay? Okay. Some, some whoever All on right, some sir. team, right? Okay. And this is my Charles Barkley. <laughs> my man, he got the ball. Oh, now he's going down the court. Oh, man, he missed. <laughs> 
That was my impression. Uh, I don't know how to. He he never called out like numbers or like who people were. <laughs> so just imagine you're like listening to it on the radio or something, well, and you got Charles Barkley just yelling into the microphone like, <laughs> "My dog, there he is, there he is. Oh, here he goes. Oh, that he's gonna do it. Hit. Oh, do you, yeah, he got it. Do you feel like his tongue is perpetually swollen? Like he always like, come here. Oh man, my man got the ball. Yeah, he's running down the court. It's like, Charles, yeah. open your mouth and talk. Open your mouth. But anyway, look, back to the original point. Charles Barkley wants to act like Roy Moore is some sort of, like, you know, scourge on the state of Alabama over allegations, by the way. Roy Moore has been proven guilty of nothing, accused of everything. Except wearing stupid outfits. Very stupid. And he's not a smart guy. He pulled a gun in a campaign event. He's a dummy. I still haven't figured that one. I get it. I wouldn't have voted for the guy either. Don't get me wrong. Right. It takes me back to my McCain-Obama days, okay? I didn't vote when it was McCain versus Obama because I really looked at it and said, well, (laughs) oh well. (laughs) Like, (laughs) America made its choice. Uh, I voted when it was Trump because I wanted to vote for Trey Gowdy. I didn't vote for Trump. And, And... and I get grief because, well, why don't you vote for Trump? It's just like a vote for the other guy. I don't buy into the two-party system. It doesn't matter to me that America as a whole has decided we're a two-party system and not voting for this guy is voting for that guy. I don't buy into it. I, I buy into the wigs back. <laughs> no, listen, if they'll come, I'll have them. Uh, but if, if I can go and have my voice heard, as small as it may be, that is America. I'm writing you in. That's America. On a wig ticket. Thank you very much. Next office that comes up for a vote. You're I, in. I want Taylor's fire and sewer, but I think they just uh, they just voted on. Those are the people that tore up my property and left it to rot and acted like I owed them something. Bunch of jerks. Um, okay. Where were we? So Charles Barkley. Oh, yeah. Roy Moore has never been proven guilty of anything. Um, been accused. You just drug through the court of public opinion. We know at least one of the women is lying. They are hijacking this Me Too movement that could have had some validity, but now nobody takes it seriously because any sideways glance, any you look good tonight, my wife could walk in right now and say I've sexually harassed her 17 times over the last three weeks, and I would say I, I was just... believe it. Yeah, I was, I was just putting the moves on. It doesn't matter if it's your wife. If she says no, ah, you know? So then I go, well, what's the whole point of marriage? I digress. <laughs> I digress. Uh, the point is this. They have made a mockery of legitimate sexual assault victims. They've made a mockery of the political system in general. And then Charles Barkley gets up and wants to act like, well, if you vote for Roy Moore, you're making the state of Alabama look stupid. You're making them look stupid. Here's an article from Deadspin.com dated December 31st, 2008. That, by the way, is in the middle of my time living in Birmingham, Alabama, which is why I know about this article. This is interesting, says Deadspin. The police report from Charles Barkley's DUI arrest was released, and it is easily one of the most fascinating, disturbing, mind-blowing things you'll ever read. TMZ has the dirty (laughs) details, but the smoking gun has the full report. Now, fair warning. If you're in a work environment or you're with your children, turn it down. I'll read this. It'll take 90 seconds. You can come back. (laughs) Sorry, Mom. Here we go. According to the officer who wrote the report, quote, he told me that he ran the stop sign because he was in a hurry to pick up the girl I saw get in the passenger seat. The officer uh, continues, quote, he asked me to admit that she was hot. He asked me, you want the truth? When I told him that I did, he said, I was going to drive around the corner and get a blowjob. He then explained that he had get, that she had given him a blowjob one week earlier, and he said it was the best one he'd ever had in his life. The report says when Barkley was taken to the station, he told one of the employees, I'll tattoo my name on your ass if he helped, quote, get him out of the DUI. According to the report, quote, he laughed and then quickly corrected himself and said, I'll tattoo your name on my ass. And then laughed again. The report also says officers found a handgun in the vehicle, which was immediately impounded. The report doesn't say if the handgun was legal or not. And the only thing that we know for sure is it was loaded. Now, (laughs) here's Charles Barkley, drunk, behind the wheel with a loaded gun in the car. Both crimes 
Okay, you can't in South Carolina. You can't even take a sip of alcohol and have a loaded firearm on yourself. Right. Right. Okay. Charles Barkley got intoxicated to the point he got pulled over and had a girl in the car. I don't know. Let's see. Has Charles Barkley ever been married? It'd be interesting to know. Was Charles Barkley? Let's see. I don't know, but I'm I'm seeing that he served five whole days in jail for this incident. What? No. Look at this. That's great. This can't be true. Hold on. Here's a what? <clears throat> this wait, has got to be fake. Did this did this happen in Alabama? Is this what you're telling me? Where did this happen? Yeah, I thought that happened in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I was pretty sure. Uh, oh no, he was in Arizona. Yeah, okay, so that's yeah, what I'm in seeing. Arizona. Okay, I just yeah, want to make yeah. sure we're looking at this. I was starting to wonder how many DUIs he got had at this point. Yeah, no, he's in Arizona. Uh, he is single, married, in relationship. He's married. He got married on February 9th, nineteen eighty nine. He has one child. Um, uh, Barkley's married man. He's married to Marine Bloomhart. They got married in 1989. They had a daughter. Uh, I can't dis- I can't find if his wife left him. Um, it's funny though. I f- if you search Charles Barkley divorce, the first one of the first articles that comes up says the secret to former NBA player Charles Barkley's successful marriage. <laughs> I don't know how that's happened. Um, hmm. Anyway, I won't go off Wikipedia. Um, uh, but yeah, let's see. But what about children? I mean, it looks like he's been married since 1989. I don't know much about the guy. I don't really care. Uh, But everything I'm reading says he's been married for 25 years. So he's cheating on his wife um, and uh, driving while drunk. So who? anyway, here's the point. So all these people feel free to get up and be suddenly the moral harbinger of Alabama politics. And this is a guy that was cheating on his wife and getting a DUI all at the same time. Come on. Just keep that. In perspective, when you listen to people blather on and on about how great they are, I don't care who won the Alabama Senate race. Quite frankly, I'm pretty well over American politics at this point. I really feel like it's all a dumpster fire. We're not going to survive either way you slice it. Um, You got so many people involved that are so corrupt and so crooked. Who knows what to believe? You look at Pizzagate, seems to be a lot of credible evidence. There's a lot of pedophiles in the American uh, political system that are just getting a free pass because of who they are and the power they wield. And so uh, you know, those people got to be shaken right now cuz yeah. This this sort of Weinstein train just keeps on rolling down the tracks and it's mm-hmm. we're, it's just picking off more people. I mean, just before we started the show, um, there's allegations against Tavis Smiley who's been on PBS for 100 years. Um and who else? Russell Simmons. I saw an article about him. Apparently, three women saying uh, that he raped them or something to that effect. Yeah. And so, if if what we're seeing now is rape accusations or uh, sexual assault or harassment or whatever they might be, if that's what we're seeing now, I, I wonder if there's going to be a turning point where we we start finding these pedophiles and exposing them in the same manner that we're exposing these Hollywood hypocrites and, and, and the like. Here's my problem with it all, and the reason why I don't think that will happen. Maybe it will, but mostly it won't, is because everyone who has come down so far in this They're only coming down because they're no longer able to sign your check. They've become irrelevant people. So if Hollywood really believed this whole ordeal, why is Woody Allen still somebody they regard in high esteem and that they revere the opportunity to work for? Very fair point. There's a... Uh, editorial by Dylan Farrow in the LA Times and it goes I'm assuming 
I, I thought I knew this. Yeah. So Dylan alleged she's 32 now. Uh, Woody Allen is her stepfather. Stepfather. Quote, I have long maintained that when I was seven years old, Woody Allen led me into an attic away from the babysitters who had been instructed never to leave me alone with him. He then sexually assaulted me. I told the truth to the authorities then, and I've been telling it unaltered for more than 20 years. Why is it that Harvey Weinstein and others accused have been cast out by Hollywood while Allen recently secured a multi-million dollar distribution deal with Amazon greenlit by former Amazon studio executive Roy Price before he was suspended over sexual misconduct allegations? Allen's latest feature, Wonder Wheel, was released theatrically on December the 1st. Allen denies my allegations. But this is not a he said, child said situation. Alan's pattern of inappropriate behavior, putting his thumb in my mouth, climbing into bed with me in his underwear, constant grooming and touching was witnessed by friends and family members. At the time of the alleged assault, he was in therapy for his conduct towards me. She goes on and on. You should read this entire thing. Read the entire thing. We shared it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash felt recall show. Read the entire thing. Here's my point. Dylan has never, ever stopped her story. It's never altered. It's never been different. She's always had the same story. And then now you have this slew of people who are cashing checks because of their story that's never been told before, i.e. 16 women accusing Donald Trump, i.e. the people accusing Roy Moore. So where have you been? So I understand the idea of Stockholm Syndrome. If you've been abused or whatever, you just remain quiet. I kind of get that. But I also believe that we're now kind of in this fever pitch moment, if that makes sense, yeah. where people are coming forward and saying things that may not necessarily be true just because there's a payday involved. And since Woody Allen is signing paychecks legitimately, multi-million dollar paychecks for people, the people that have worked for him, they don't want to say anything negative about it. And Dylan actually provides very stunning um, support for this argument. Discussing Weinstein, Wonder Wheel star Kate Winslet, who you might remember from Titanic, said, quote, the fact one of that, my favorites. Mm-hmm, the fact that these women are starting to speak out about the gross misconduct of one of our most important and well-regarded film producers is incredibly brave. It has been deeply shocking, shocking to hear of Alan... She said, quote, I didn't know Woody, and I don't know anything about that family. As the actor in the film, you just have to step away and say, I don't know anything really. (laughs) That's awfully convenient. Likewise, Blake Lively said of Weinstein, quote, it's important that women are furious right now. It's important that there is an uprising. It's important that we don't stand for this. But on the subject of Alan, she said, quote, it's very dangerous to factor in things you don't know anything about. Greta Gerwig, stupid name, who also starred in Allen's To Rome With Love and has called him her, quote, idol, said of the revelations about Weinstein, it's heartbreaking, and I think it's overdue. But when pressed by Terry Gross of NPR on whether she felt conflicted about working with Allen, she said, quote, you know, it's all very difficult to talk about. I think I'm living in that space of fear of being worried about how I talk about it and what I say. So, again... Outrage when it doesn't affect your paycheck. Silence when it does. Hey, real quick, just a pop quiz. Mm-hmm. Name three Woody Allen movies. Mm, I, I I don't know. I could. I know Woody Woody. Uh, what's his face? Um, Will Ferrell was in one. I, I that I think I liked uh, where he heard the woman's voice in his head. You know what I'm talking about? I think that was no. a Woody Allen film. Yeah, there's a woman who was writing a book about him, and he could hear the whole thing. I think that was a Woody Allen film. I don't know. But I, other than that, no, I can't. I know there's some famous ones because Hollywood loves them, but um, I don't know enough about him to know what he's made. I just know he's a pervert pedophile that has taken advantage of young children. Isn't the woman he's currently married to, wasn't that his adopted daughter? Isn't yeah. that how that worked? Yeah. What a freak. 
you really have to be pretty soulless to work with Woody Allen. And quite frankly, if you've ever cashed a check by working with Woody Allen, you have no moral high ground on the issue of pedophilia and and just really sexual misconduct and the deviousness that goes alongside of it. Do you have a list of Woody Allen movies? I just pulled it up. All right, let, read some off. Let me see if I've ever heard of any. Should I you know, should I start most recent or oldest? Tropic Thunder. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> knew it. I, I knew I knew it somewhere. Tip of the tongue. Uh, 1971 Bananas. Nope. That was the. Wait, wasn't that a Gwen Stefani song? Was uh, that a Gwen Stefani song? B- yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, 1978 Interiors. Nope. I'm just skipping around because there's Do it. a lot of them. Go for it. Um, <laughs> Even a blind squirrel finds a nut, right? <laughs> you can make all these terrible movies. 1987 Radio Days. No, never heard of it. 1988, Another Woman. No. That's a leading title there. Uh, Another Woman. Parenthetical (laughs) phrase. My daughter. Adopted daughter. daughter. Right. Uh, Freak. 1997, Deconstructing Harry. Mm, That sounds familiar. Uh, 1999, Sweet and Low Down. Nope. Uh... 2005 Match Point. That's that's the one. That's the Will Ferrell basketball movie. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. No? Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think so. <clears throat> 2013 Blue Jasmine. No, I never heard of it. Uh, yet to be released, A Rainy Day in New York. Hmm. Be coming out next year. Oh, that's get excited that's about that. I'm so excited uh, about probably that. Probably go ahead and buy those tickets online right now. Midnight in Paris, match point. I don't, you know, to me, when I think of Woody Allen, I think of um, really crappy uh, indie art films. Yeah, exactly. That uh, don't really have much plot or character development. And sure. So they're not really worth watching. It's like, uh, you know how we all have that one coworker where we look at him and we go, how's this guy still here? Uh, that's kind of how I feel about Woody Allen. Like everybody around him is looking at him going, how's this guy still here? But uh, and He must have a lot of money because just looking at the guy. What an idiot, not right? Not real intimidating. No, I, you know, I, what I would give to walk into a room and the only people in it were Woody Allen and Hillary Clinton. And <laughs> I could just punch both of them square in the face and just feel so good about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right. Let's 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 just hope he, you know, gets what's coming to him. Um, as the mayor of San Francisco did. Maybe just kill over of a heart attack tomorrow and we'll all be... He's 82 years old, by the way. How is it... And his real name is Alan Stewart... Konigsberg. Screw that guy. How is it that a guy like Woody Allen gets to live to 82 and then so many brave and heroic people die in their early 20s? You know, like you have people who literally sign up to go over and defend freedom and they have to be blown to bits. And a guy like Woody Allen's allowed to exist and breathe the air that belongs to those people. Whatever. All right. Uh, so here's one. This was our runner up for vote of the week. I just I love this story because. It's such a sham. Um, A New Zealand dude is now a weightlifter who claims to be a woman. The picture of him losing uh, on theblaze.com is so good. Anyway, um, confused weightlifter. They say transgender, but I'm going to use the word confused. Confused weightlifter Laurel (laughs) Hubbard is a dude, they say biological male, who made headlines recently after deciding to compete after as a woman. How does that work, by the way? How do you you sign up and they say, all right, well, you're in the men's division. Whoa, whoa, whoa. uh, I've decided to compete as a woman. What's the test? Like what, this is the world we live in, where you're not willing to put your pen down, look up from the paper, and go, right. So here's the thing. Two ways to go about this. Either you show me what's between your legs, and we go with that, <laughs> or you just don't get to compete, because nobody's buying into this, I'm actually a chick routine. You know what I'm saying? This is where we are in life. This is where This is what we deal with now. My poor kids. <laughs> like, I just. Where are the feminists now? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I feel like that's an honest question. Mm-hmm. I feel like the, the, the people that get outraged over, I don't mean to be disparaging, but 
No, please do. I do but it all the time. I know you do. But the, it feels but good. Things that really aren't all that important. Right. Yeah, they sure. They get really spun sure. up about it. Yeah. And then dude man decides <laughs> he's going to be a chick. I'm going to Yeah. And beat all these other, well, right. nearly beat nope. yep. all these other women. All but one. Like if you're if you're a feminist, how pissed are you right now? Right. And why aren't you up in arms? Like, where it, well, are all those voices? Yeah, but I think if you're actually a feminist, a feminist needs to argue the fact that there should be no differentiation. The women should compete squarely against the men, and the heaviest weight lifted wins, right? Well, maybe so. <laughs> I mean, that's what I think. I, I'm not a feminist, so I, I don't know. Well, I, I am, so I do. Um, but it is. But I knew it. My point is. Well, it's like I saw this thing on Facebook today where <laughs> there was this woman, she's drinking coffee, and uh, she's looking out her window, and everything's covered in snow, and she says, um, I just hope the world can treat me the same way it treats a man. And then in the next panel, there's a dude shoveling snow off the driveway, and then in the last panel, she says, starting tomorrow. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you know, there's still, and it's... And it's not a matter of the fact that women can't shovel snow. That's not the point. The point is men should be willing to shovel the snow for the women because that's just the way things naturally work. We we want to care for and provide for women. That's just the way we're designed. It's what we do. It's not a matter of them not being able to shovel snow. So when you run into a feminist and she goes, well, I can do all those things too. You go, well, you know what? I don't want to do anything for you anyway. Okay, so, so get out there and do it. Same argument then. Where are the feminists saying, why do we have a men's division and a women's division? Let's just put them together. And right. then, and then yeah. we don't need transgender athletes. We can just have dudes competing against chicks. Exactly my point. Yeah, and absolutely. And we all move on with our lives. Yeah, absolutely. If you want it both ways, you can't have it both ways. You know, would a feminist be upset uh, if, if a woman walks up and open palm slaps me across the face. Let's just say she attempts to and hits me, you know, across the neck as I as I dodge the punch. Is a feminist gonna be upset when I, you know, cock this woman like right in the face? I just cock back and, and slam one home on the side of her jaw. Is, is a feminist gonna be upset? Is a feminist gonna go? Hey, you're all, you're all. Hey, natural reaction. Fight's a fight. Well, trying to protect my thyroid. Oh man, I don't have a thyroid. Uh, <laughs> jerk. I'm actually thinking of there was a famous video of a college football player. Do you remember this? Where he was in a bar, he was leaned up against a bar, and a girl came up and started yelling at him. And when he tried to kind of back away, she took a swing. Do you remember this? And she missed, and then he just cold cocked her square in the jaw. I have this thing knocked where her out. All these uh, videos of football players knocking out their girlfriends sort of run together. So nah. no, I don't remember exactly which one we're talking about. Well, he hit her pretty that might, hard. That might be shocking, but uh, there are so many of them that uh, I can't really keep them apart anymore. Well, uh, ex-Florida State QB punched the woman. Uh, let's see here. DeAndre Johnson. Um, he visited the program, blah, blah, blah. Uh, signed Florida State. Yeah, he was dismissed from the program after video was released showing him punching a woman in the face at a Tallahassee, Florida bar. He was charged with misdemeanor battery and later went on ABC's Good Morning America to apologize. But <clears throat> I got to tell you, my interpretation of the video that's out there is the fact that this woman started it all, instigated it, and was looking for trouble. Um, he tried to back away. She took a swing, and, and he punched her square in the face. Uh, does it make it right or wrong? You know, it's for you to decide, but my point is just that does if that you depend want on it, your, If you're a feminist or not, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, it does. If you're a feminist, you should want this woman to be believed to be able to hold her own against a guy like that. Shouldn't be any different. The law should not measure a man versus a woman. A law should just measure individual versus individual. But they don't want it that way. All right, anyway, this confused dude uh, was competing in the (laughs) plus 198-pound class. Just think about that for a second. Uh, He won the silver by lifting 273 pounds. Wimp. Um, Hubbard (laughs) didn't medal in the 333 pounds clean and jerk lift, but the combined total of 606 pounds was enough for an overall silver uh, as well. So couldn't medal in one, but did really well in the other, so he got silver. Uh, He's a 39-year-old. 
who lived as a male for 35 years. <laughs> He's won three of four international contests. Not everyone's happy about it. We're in a power sport, which is normally related to masculine tendencies, where you've got that aggression, you've got the right hormones, and you can lift bigger weights, says Australian Weightlifting Federation Chief Executive Michael Keelan to Fox Sports, adding that this guy's presence creates a, quote, uneven playing field. Absolutely. But we should all just remember that this dude still lost to a chick. Uh, As much as he wishes he was one, he isn't. I love that the headlines are transgender weightlifter makes history by winning two medals. Unreal. The history here (laughs) is that the world is accepting a guy who believes he's a woman and not helping him get the help he needs. Let's move on. That should have been our vote of the week, but it's not. Our vote of the week is liberal comedian um, Sarah Silverman who was scared, shaken, and freaking out when a boyfriend flew the American flag. According to TheBlaze.com, Silverman addressed nationalism in the monologue for her Thursday show on Hulu called I Love You, America with Sarah Silverman. Doesn't sound like it. She detailed a time. It is a she, right? I think so. When she felt an inexplicable fear after seeing an ex-boyfriend fly a U.S. flag in his yard. Silverman began her monologue by telling the story, saying, quote, I had a boyfriend many years ago. He was my first boyfriend who had his own house. And one day I went outside to see what he was doing, and he was hoisting an American flag up the flagpole in his front yard. (laughs) Terrifying. (laughs) What did she do? She instantly felt very weird. It didn't make sense, she says. But I felt this feeling of like, um, I felt scared. Yeah, I felt scared. So I was like, uh, what are you doing? And he said, raising the flag. Silverman said that she asked her boyfriend why he was hoisting the flag, and he responded that it was because he loved America. I was like, right, right, of course, she explained, but inside I was shaken. I had no idea why I was freaking out. I just, I had this very visceral reaction. And my sister, she's a rabbi in Israel. She explained to me, she was like, dude, nationalism is innately terrifying for Jews. Think about it. Flags, marching, blind allegiance. These things tend to ring a bell for us. Right, Silverman added. Of course, duh, it made sense. (laughs) So according to Sarah Silverman, if you raise a flag in front of your house because you love America, because you love the idea that all men were created equal, because you love the idea of a free market, because you love the idea of providing that same freedom to the indigenous people of foreign lands who hate you, by the way, and will kill your troops while... They try and provide this freedom. Uh, if if you believe that, then you're the same as the Nazis who, with the help of the German people, marched Jews into ovens and murdered them to the tune of six million people. Okay. Okay. Basically the same thing. <laughs> it's just basically the same thing. <sighs> We're in so much trouble. I don't know what to do about it. I really don't. Unbelievable. Okay. Did I miss anything, Hulon? Probably. Oh, I always do. WreathsAcrossAmerica.org. That's our charity of choice this week. We hope you'll visit them online. Make a small donation. Uh, put a wreath in front of a gravestone at Arlington. It'd make a big, big difference and be a huge, huge help. So for location and everything else, you can visit WreathsAcrossAmerica.org. Find a way you can help. In the meantime, in between time, next week will be episode 57 of the Felt Recall Podcast. And we'll see you right back here for that. Then, bye-bye.